The Nikabi Diary Season 1 Illustrated Book is now available in paperback. Own your copy now by clicking the link in the description box. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Season 2 of the Nakabi Diaries podcast, a platform dedicated to sharing the stories of the women behind the veil. This season, we will be speaking to more Muslim women from all walks of life as we continue to discuss their deep and intimate reasons for wearing the niqab. The Nakabi Diaries, our experiences, our perspectives, our voices. I'm your host, Samar, and thank you for listening. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister, how are you? Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I am great. How are you? Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Khair. Jazakallah khair for joining us today on the Naqabi Diary. Sister, could you please introduce yourself for the listeners and tell us a little bit about what you do, inshallah? Thank you for giving me this opportunity to... Well, my name is Latif Adnan and... Uh, I'm actually a social media activist. I do some activism work on Instagram where I try to raise awareness about social issues. I'm also a mom of two. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So um, can you tell us about your journey to the Niqab and your backgrounds, your Islamic background, inshallah? Well, I'm from the Maldives, so maybe you're not familiar, but This is supposed to be a 100% Muslim country. And I say supposed to be because um, there are non-Muslims too, but then it's not, you know, like, it's not on record. So, um, like in the Maldives, uh, by law, you have to be Muslim. So if you're not a Muslim, then you're like, by law, you're not a citizen. So Really? Yeah. (laughs) There's a place like that? I didn't, I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah, and, and it's really funny because um, you, you, you see a really wide spectrum of people who, mm-hmm. uh, when it comes to following Islam, like some people are a bit, you know, some people are pretty religious while some people are not. Mm-hmm. So you can find like all types of people here. So, yeah, so it's not what you would think of. When we say, when I say it's a hundred percent Muslim country, right? So yeah, so I'm, like I said, I'm a born Muslim, and so uh, uh, my sister actually used to teach me a lot of things about Islam. I didn't see um, Nigabi women very much growing up, but because my sister like taught me all these things. I don't know. I believed everything she said <laughs> when I was that young. And she, when she told me about wearing the hijab and the niqab, then I also like um, set a goal for myself that I'm going to wear it. I was really young back then. So, yeah, that's I it was like a how do I say it? like it was obvious to me that I would wear it someday. Yeah, that's Mashallah. how it happened. Mashallah. So you mentioned that you didn't see many people wearing the niqab. So even though it's a Muslim country, it's still not something that is quite common. Is that what you're saying? No, like when I was growing up, it wasn't common. Now right. it's pretty common. Okay. Okay. Mashallah. So did you face any kind of ob- objections when you did decide to wear it? Not really. No. My family w- was okay with it. So would you say that in your country, seeing it is supposed to be a hundred percent Muslim country, is there like, do you, do you think, or do you have any experience even outside of your country that there's, you know, the kind of negative connotations associated with the niqab? Yes. Uh, like I said, here, there is a spectrum. Mm-hmm. So uh, there are people who doesn't, there are people who don't like the niqab. And I have, uh, I myself have faced some, um, the occasional street harassment, you know, somebody saying something negative about the niqab, but Mm. actually I think compared to other niqab sisters, I I think my experience with negativity is pretty low. Alhamdulillah. So how, how does that affect you? Like, do you think when you experience negativity, like how do you usually deal with it? I 
I don't think it affects me really, to be very honest, because I'm very confident in like my decision and my lifestyle and like I feel angry towards them. Mm. I, I, I feel like uh, going home and writing an angry status about it, oh, wow. <laughs> but I don't. <laughs> Mashallah. But I'm asking as well because obviously, you know, you as I said, you're living in a majority Muslim country. So when you do have these kind of um, you know, negative remarks and comments, are they they're mostly coming from Muslims, I take it. Yes. It's funny, right? It is coming from Muslims. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have other issues here too, like um uh Nikabi women weren't allowed to work as teachers or certain other professions. Uh, these laws do keep changing, but there was a time it wasn't allowed uh, to, uh, like, there was a time when teachers weren't allowed to win a gap, but I think that has changed, but I'm not sure. Mm. But there are certain professions in this country where Nigabis aren't allowed to work, even certain uh, college campuses where they're not allowed. So that's, that's there. Yeah, mashallah. Because um, in your country, um, is, is, is there, am I right to assume that there's quite a bit of tourism there? Because I don't know much about the Maldives, but any time I've heard of it as a country, it's usually, you know, be, being in the UK, it's a place that's referred to as like a holiday destination. So do you have a lot of like tourism from like non-Muslim countries and things? Yes, that's the other funny thing when we say it's a Muslim country. Oh my God, I don't want this podcast to be about me talking bad about my country, but like um, this country is, the biggest um, industry here is tourism industry and mm -hmm. uh, like the it's like a how do I say it's like a facade they put up for the entire world like uh, like a tourist may, may come here and spend their time in in at the resorts mm -hmm. it's like five star seven star luxury resorts and it's they won't see any Nigabi women there yeah. like they won't um come face to face with um anybody who is muslim looking as such yeah like i i think uh i i don't think i know they they do that on purpose like the resort owners and people they do that on purpose so that uh how do i say it? uh so that they don't scare away the tourists mm. you know some people uh, there is a lot of islamophobia going on right Allah, because yeah. of that Allah. No, it's, it's really interesting that you say that because i said i don't know anything about the maldives so that's why uh -huh. i asked you that question because i di i did not know that it was a muslim country I, like i had zero idea I yeah exactly idea that's what that. i'm trying to say <laughs> yeah because i know that i know there's a lot of muslim countries that tourism is like one of their biggest like you know ways of making money and stuff like one of their uh -huh. biggest industries but yeah um you know that they're Muslim countries because it's something that's talked because they're talked about on that side as well. Do you know what I mean? Like I think with the Maldives, us maybe because it's like islands and things. Yeah, it's maybe basically a bunch of islands. Yeah, it's probably why. Yeah, Subhanallah. So, um, have you travelled outside of the Maldives at all? Where in the Naqab? Yeah, uh, I did pass through Malaysian airport, Sri Lankan airport and then the Maldives airport. So mm. the, what's interesting is uh, in Malaysia and Sri Lanka, they don't take you to a separate place to look at your face, but mm. um, in the Maldives, they have a separate partition space where a woman will come, like if it's a, if it's a Nigabi woman, uh, they, they, they will provide like with a woman who would come and look at your face without other people seeing. So that's that's good. Alhamdulillah. That they accommodate yes, that. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. So um would you say that you feel that niqab is isn't a barrier then? You mentioned earlier that, you know, there's certain jobs in your country that you definitely can't do if you're wearing the niqab. So would you say that there's a lot of kind of um restrictions for niqabi sisters or is there still space for them to do certain things and like kind of jobs and things like that? Well, I think uh, yes, unfortunately, the world is like that, right? So it uh, it differs from place to place, but unfortunately, the niqab does become a barrier in terms of 
uh, access to education or access to certain kinds of work or you, you lose a lot of opportunities but then we we i think it, everyone uh, starts wearing the niqab knowing that it is like that mm-hmm. but we just do it for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, at the same time i think it is our responsibility as niqabis to create opportunities for us or like uh, take the opportunity if we get it or like if we don't have platforms create them like like what you're doing mashallah this really like what you're doing it's really cool <laughs> alhamdulillah alhamdulillah yeah mashallah so because it's a muslim country how is the islamic education there do, do they have madrasas and you know islamic schools quran schools is that something that's quite common um, and popular when i was growing up there was this one uh, arabic school but um, how do i put it like they used to i i didn't go to that school you know my sister went to that school so she would study in arabic and i don't know whether there was islamic stuff as such but i think they did other than that it's usually just like um normal like non islam how do i say it? secular education yeah right yeah but then yeah but then we do have um islamic studies as like one subject you know mm-hmm. but i'm not sure how they do it now but it's not like a complete makeover but i think there is a bit more quranic studies in well, not quranic studies um tajweed and stuff involved okay. So, um, you know, as far as obviously, like we've mentioned about the tourist um, element of the country and everything like that, um, do they have um, like kind of areas where they're sectioned off that is mostly for the natives, people who actually live in the country? So, yeah, they have um, uh, say, uh, separate islands for resorts and um, and like i live in an island and this is not a resort so there is no tourism here as such mm-hmm. but in in some some islands they have like mixed you know like even tourists can go there too right. and the natives do live there too okay so like the, so where you live there you do you have access to the nice beaches and you know things like that um yeah i guess so i mean but you know plastic pollution is a huge problem right, right so yeah. trash management <laughs> so uh, at the resorts they they would keep it like really really clean so that the tourists um don't get to see any trash but yeah. like if you live in the normal islands then they do come up, come across trash and all yes but other than that uh, it's the island life like you do get to experience the nice island tropical life you know most of the islands but not in the capital city you you should check it out it's yeah. called mala city <laughs> mala city yes okay. so if you google you'll see images it's like a concrete jungle they say it's a concrete jungle mashallah <laughs> okay, mashallah i i used to live there before but then i recently not recently when i remarried like when i married to my present husband i moved to his island before that i used i used to live in the capital all my life so um you mentioned in the like earlier on that um now that the niqab is more common so would uh-huh. you say that you've have you met any sisters who've been forced into wearing it and, and, and at the same time have you met sisters who want to wear it but they are not allowed because of their families or otherwise no not at all okay. like em- anyone who wears it wears it because they want to okay alhamdulillah but then interestingly i have i hear a lot about people who have been forced to wear the hijab all oh, right the hijab itself okay <laughs> why would why do you think that would be i think it's um the societal pressure you know mm. because um hijab has turned into something that is like in my opinion like for most people here more than the islamic meaning of hijab it's more like uh, something you just put on your head to blend in 
so that people would stop asking like when is your child going to wear hijab you know yeah like, everyone here wears hijabs so just wear it you know i think it's kind of like that i'm okay. not sure <laughs> yeah, subhanallah so um what advice would you give to sisters who want to wear the niqab but they don't feel confident to wear it well i actually wanted to say like when i was uh, when i started wearing it um like i said i had always um wanted to wear the niqab right mm -hmm. but then when i started wearing it i found it very inconvenient like it was difficult for me to walk it was difficult for me to like um see properly uh so i think before um before someone wears the niqab they should find out uh, like that there are different kinds of styles mm -hmm. uh, like uh, when i first started wearing it um i used to wear i didn't know that there were different styles available so there would be like um you know the slit right it's very yeah. narrow so yeah. it becomes yeah. very difficult for me to look yeah so course. only after many years uh i knew about this wide slit ones mm -hmm. so it it made a huge difference and uh, to, like it it was way, way convenient for me yeah, the no other problem. thing is um the fabric mm -hmm. when it's really light it makes a huge difference yeah of course so I, at the I same think, time you still don't want yeah. the to be see through, see through as well that's yeah. another problem yeah so it's having that kind of balance isn't it yeah but there are like really good um brands but the thing is what i'm trying to uh, go uh, what i'm trying to say is like uh when when a when a girl when a really young girl for example starts wearing niqab and they find that it's really difficult then they, they should they might like lose interest right mm -hmm. because of the inconveniences so it's important that they have this sort of guidance that uh just because you find one kind of niqab difficult it doesn't mean the niqab itself is difficult like you can experiment with different styles with different brands you get me yes definitely yeah yeah of course <laughs> yeah that, that's that's really um you know that makes sense it's, it's good that you've mentioned that because i think a, a lot of women do have this experience when they first start wearing it they think oh i don't feel comfortable i can't breathe but maybe you've just got a niqab that isn't good fabric because i had that experience when i first put the niqab on as well uh -huh. the one that i had like the fabric was not breathable at all and literally i felt like i was suffocating and i wore it <clears throat> i wore it for um i had actually i wore it to do a presentation in front of a group of people actually and uh -huh. literally i was and i was dying underneath it it was terrible <laughs> like i was sitting in front of a group of non-muslims like giving a presentation and like literally I couldn't breathe but and I was like you know so you can imagine and I was and then it would made me feel nervous and anxious you know then they uh -huh. started and some of them had asked me some uncomfortable questions as well and you know when I was mm -hmm. giving them answers they they wasn't like you know accepting the answers kind of thing like even though it was opinion based opinion based answers but mm -hmm. you know even you know it was just a really uncomfortable terrible situation and I, like yeah I just I hated the whole kind of experience but yeah that never hard like subhanallah couldn't breathe at all so and I still the thing is I still kept wearing it after that because I didn't have anything else so I just kept wearing that one and oh my um, god yeah and like you know when I would walk around and you know doing your shopping and things like that like sometimes you get out of breath and it's just like the thing that like you're trying to breathe and the thing is like getting sucked into your mouth to your nose <laughs> it was just it was really <laughs> terrible but alhamdulillah eventually I did managed to get hold of other niqab um mm. and then subhanallah it was just like an eye opener because it was just like well actually i can breathe in this you know completely different so you have the kind of yeah. when you, if you start off with something that isn't good quality you might think that that's what everybody's experiencing but somehow you know they've got some super lungs or something that they're just being able to breathe through it that <laughs> you can't like <laughs> but it's not like that it's down to it's definitely down to the materials and some materials as well, I found them, um, you know, some of the, obviously some of them are softer than others. So you get like, there's a range of breathable fabrics, but um, yeah. 
the weave of them is different and the feel of against your skin is different as well so you know especially if you have sensitive skin you need to kind of pay attention to that too because maybe you can get like so i've got some knockoffs which are very breathable but the fabric itself doesn't feel very soft so um, when yeah. you wear it on your face, it's not terrible, but it's not like, oh yeah, this is my favorite niqab. Do you know what I mean? Because it's just like, it doesn't, it doesn't feel that like kind of, you know, extra comfort. Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah, those, those, those points are really, mashallah, valid. definitely is like really important to think about these things. So I think that's good because it's the practical side of it. You know, there's one thing, yeah, doing it for the sake of Allah, of course, but that makes it easier for you to keep up when you have actually you know looked into the the easiest and the best way to do it yeah i one one more thing i wanted to say is like um some people hesitate to wear the niqab because they think they will have to stick with wearing black for the rest of their lives mm -hmm. and um but it's not a must to wear black right but uh in in the um i think in southeast asia it's really common mm -hmm. so they i think they mistake that um they have a mistaken belief that uh black is equal to uh niqab you know yeah so this could be uh uh how do i say it could be demotivating for like young girls to look up to uh niqabi women and always see black like you know what what is your opinion in this Oh, me personally, I don't, I, I, I love black here. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I absolutely love black. And I think most Nakabi sisters, they tell me the same thing that black is like, there's just something when you wear black, you just feel like, yeah, like that's it. Do you know what I mean? Like it's, it's strange. It's hard to kind of describe, but like, I know, I think some sisters who are listening, maybe inshallah, they'll, you know, I don't know how you feel about it, but I love black. Yeah. And a lot of sisters, I know they love black, but I don't wear black all the time. All of my Nakabs aren't black either. You know, I do have other colors because you know from what i know the the color black is not like something mandatory that you must be black you know um so yeah, yeah. i think it's, um, it's not that i have anything against black okay i yeah. also like black is a beautiful color but i feel like um if if we like there is so so little awareness about islamic knowledge here mm -hmm. like especially among families who are not like very practicing like I said, uh, in this country, there are many families like that, right? So like in those families, if there are like young girls growing up and you know, they have some interest in niqab, but all they see is black, it could be demotivating, right? So I think it will be good for them to see role models uh, wearing different styles and different um, colors, like obviously like which fits into the bounds of islam like yeah of course not, yeah nothing. yeah because yeah. i think there's a fine line obviously it's, it's good to show these things but i think we at the same time personally i think we do need to be careful about like making niqab something fashionable because it is hijab and hijab is not supposed to be a fashionable thing yes you should look decent you should look you know like you're well kept you're well looked after do you know what i mean like this part of islam to dress well you look to look respectable so you don't want to have yeah. your clothes like not looking nice they should look nice and there's nothing wrong with looking good but um not to be like kind of exaggerated with it so i think it is it is good because especially like in a lot of cultures there's a, a lot of negative connotations when it comes to like black and stuff and because we're covering like completely uh -huh. you know that's like this is something that you know i, I know in like a lot of non-muslims it's something that they pick at you know if you're if you're not a muslim and you're not wearing you're not you're not covered from head to toe black is always the color that is the go-to color for everybody generally like you know there's the yeah. little black dress and you know the black tuxedo and the black you know all there's all these different kind of um signature looks which is always the black it's always pointed to the color black so definitely there is something special about when the color black it's nice but only when it's associated with um the muslim woman especially the muslim woman who's covering her face the naqabi that time it has a it takes on a negative kind of um view so and uh, some yeah, of the sisters that i've spoken to previously yeah you have so you're like yeah, they, touching the double standard right exactly it is basically uh -huh. and some some of the sisters that i spoke to previously they they mentioned that you know they like to wear um 
other color niqabs or if they wear a black niqab they wear like a different color um, hijab under it or uh -huh. or jilbab you know just so that they're not wearing mm -hmm. completely black because it, they said it that they've, they've noticed that when they you know they, when they go in outside and when they mix with the public and stuff like that it, it does make people feel a little bit more at ease that they're not wearing just black they said uh -huh. they feel they get better reception from people and I think mm -hmm. it does help. It does help a bit. I, I personally feel so anyways. At mm -hmm. least at least in the beginning, I think um if you especially if you're not known in a certain area, um when you when you've built up a kind of a rapport with people that they know you and they and you're recognized, if you if you wear all black after that, then you know, I mean I'm not saying you shouldn't wear black at all, but yeah, if you do wear all black, then it's like they don't notice it as much, you know what I mean? Because they know that you don't always only wear black. Uh -huh. that makes sense i um i actually had this experience one day i was walking down the road near a school and that day i was wearing pink and this uh it, and uh you should know that color niqabs are really really um rare here so i was walking down the road and this girl saw me uh this year really young girl and she just looked at me and she mouthed the word wow and I was like just taken aback and I, I, I obviously I cannot be sure but I feel like she, that's what like clicked in her mind you know mm. like something like that so like that that moment really touched me so I, I wanted to show young girls that you know it doesn't have to be like all black like maybe when they grow up they they might be comfortable with wearing all black but when they're young they might feel a bit resistant towards uh, the idea that they have to wear black the rest of their lives, right? Yeah. That, that's all I'm saying. Like, sure, black is beautiful and it's all good, but, you know. Yeah, I think I think it's important and as well for, um, you know, as you said, when you're starting out, it's for the woman who does choose to wear the niqab for herself, that she should have her own kind of journey with you know what color she wants to wear and what she feels comfortable with uh -huh. that's the main thing you know because that that could be pivotal in her you know deciding on if she's going to even keep wearing it or not uh -huh. so there there uh can i talk a little bit about how i started to wear it yeah of course okay so this was when i was in i was living in sri lanka mm -hmm. and i was uh doing my degree and uh i just uh, got very motivated to wear the niqab okay so i um i told my um, parents and they were they were a bit resistant towards it so i i, I told them that i would wear it part time mm -hmm. so uh so i only wore it when i was going outside but at, at uh, but as soon as i went into college like when i stepped into the campus or when i um went to a coffee shop, for example, I would take it off, okay? So I don't know whether it's uh, practiced there, like where you live, but it wasn't a very weird concept to me because before that, I was living in India. I was doing my A-levels there and uh, I was going to a Christian college, okay? So I was wearing, uh, I used to wear a, a black abayas back then and uh, not niqab, okay? So when I went to that uh, college, the principal told me that I cannot wear the abaya. So, and and I saw that there were other Muslim, a few Muslim students who were going to that Christian college too. And what they did was, they, they used to wear this, um, like a jacket, like a, uh, what is it called? Uh, I forgot the name. I forget the name. No, like, what is it called? <laughs> Anyways, it's like a long uh, dress, but with a slit in the middle. Oh, the, so, the open front of buyer or something. Yes, yes, that. So and, and, uh, inside, they would wear like normal clothes, like um, chaps and jeans or like the salwar they wear in India. And uh, they would go to campus and they would remove that and they would remove the hijab too. And they would just put it in their bags and then go go about the days and then afterwards before going home again they will wear that so so i had like i also followed that 
so um so it wasn't very weird to me when i started wearing the niqab uh, part time in when i was in sri lanka okay mm-hmm. but then uh, i got a lot of criticism for it so um down the line i actually re- stopped wearing it so i removed it and um it was after 2 or 3 years after i got married to my first husband and i had my first kid mm-hmm. that i actually started wearing it full time okay so what i'm trying to what i'm trying to get uh, get at is uh the first question i want to ask you is uh, is this a, something that is practiced like have you ever seen people do this before like uh, part time nigabis because i i have um, i just i recently talked to someone who lives in saudi uh, saudi arabia and she said she also does that uh, like um and it removes the pressure it removes the a bit of pressure from it or something like that i'm not sure I'm, i remember the exact words she said and then i it got me thinking to another um, example like i ha- i know people who i know some women who uh, used to wear niqab and then um because of financial difficulties and they had to start uh, looking for work so because they had to work they would remove the niqabs like full time like they, they would just stop wearing it fully so because they had to go work and it's not um allowed to wear at work so i was thinking like this is uh, just a thought okay so what if it it was uh, normalized to wear it part time so that these women who are like forced due to life circumstances to go and work uh, in such an environment so that they they could can't they like wear it when they're on the road and then go to that go to their workplace and remove it like they do in uh, like they did in india like even in uh, sri lanka it's kind of uh, common like even hijab like some i'm not very familiar with how, why and how they do the hijab but i have seen like one of some of my classmates they would wear the hijab only like some days and some days they don't so mm. do you think mm. if that was kind of normalized like more people would wear the niqab um possibly i do think so actually and to be honest here in the uk i know a lot of sisters who do wear the niqab part time and um the part time uh-huh. could be just just like you mentioned for example i know a sister she works one day in a week and the job that she does uh-huh. she cannot wear the niqab for that job it wouldn't be practical okay um so she doesn't wear it when uh-huh. she goes to work but she wears it all the rest of the week all the, all the rest of the time you know whenever uh-huh. she's going out um and i know other sisters for example they just wear the niqab if they're going to like islamic functions or if they know that they're going to be like you uh-huh. know working um you know that that is going to be in a close proximity to a lot of brothers or men or things like that you know non mahrams then they will put the niqab on and right. on like if you listen to episodes i think it's 42 um i talked to a sister um, the ustad fatima barakat right. and she mentions that as well she says mm-hmm. that you know she personally doesn't wear the niqab full time because she doesn't take the opinion that it is um obligatory so um uh-huh you know for her she said it you know it's a highly it is um it is an act of worship at the end of the day if whether you believe it to be obligatory or not is an act of worship definitely mm-hmm. and she, she mm-hmm. the advice that she gave is that she thinks that all muslim women should embrace the niqab as as the hijab yeah so if you embrace it yeah. as a type of hijab then every muslim she said every muslim woman should have a niqab like just have one because it shouldn't be something like oh well because I'm not an aqabi I don't have the niqab and I never wear it. no you yeah. you should have it that is something that you can wear from time to time you know so and maybe one day from your time to time you will decide that you want to wear it all the time you know what I mean and even if you don't wear it all the time at least then I think personally because I this one of the questions I was going to ask you as well if you think that sisters who wear the hijab get treated differently from sisters who wear the niqab um you know sometimes there's like division between sisters who wear the niqab and sisters who wear the hijab because often um, the, the niqabi sister has this kind of you know 
people have this judgment of her that she believes that she's superior to other Muslim women, uh-huh. you know, and she knows more. Or, yeah. You know, there's all these kind of different connotations, which isn't the case. So if if all Muslim women had niqabs that they wore from time to time, then when mm-hmm. they see a niqabi sister, maybe then, inshallah, they wouldn't think of her as, you know, something or somebody that is that feels that she's far removed from the rest of the community because that's not the case we're just like everybody else you know you know and, and that is such, club, yeah that is such a revolutionary so idea good. right that yeah. that is such a revolutionary idea i love it that that's a great idea i never even thought of that yeah subhanallah it's true though because like think about it the hijab is obligatory yeah, this is not yeah. like something which is disputed, like with any body of reasonable knowledge yeah. of Islam. Okay, that is a fact. The hijab is obligatory, and the difference uh-huh. of opinion about the hijab is whether the face and the hand mm-hmm. should be covered or not. So some mm-hmm. scholars say that the face and the hand should also be covered, and some of them say that it's optional, that it's highly recommended, mm-hmm. even, not even just optional, but it's highly recommended, but not obligatory. So that's a very small difference there between the things. So mm-hmm. either which way, the, the preferred option is that you do wear the niqab. But if you don't, mm-hmm. then you're not sinful, inshallah. So if you do have it, then it's good. You know, so mm-hmm. what, what, what do we have to lose at the end of the day? Even if you wear it part time, you'll get that extra reward for wearing it part time, even if you don't wear it all the time. You could think about yeah. it like as being like your sunnah fasting that you do, you know. You don't have to do the sunnah fast, but if you do it, you get some, inshallah, some rewards for doing that, you know, little bit extra here and there. So yeah. we should make as much effort as possible, inshallah. So the, the trouble with, the trouble is with um, society's criticisms, right? Yeah. So if we, if we could get, if we could normalize that, that would be really great. Yeah, definitely. And look, look, for example, even with this whole pandemic, yeah, I was reading an article mm-hmm. today that a sister shared. Mm-hmm. And um, I think um, it's a, a male journalist. He was he's been talking to different different Muslim women who wear the niqab and asking them, um, you know, how they feel about wearing the niqab now since the pandemic and everybody's walking around with masks on their faces. And, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of Muslim women have started to wear the niqab since the pandemic started because they now feel that they are able to without being criticized because everybody's covering their faces anyways do you see what i mean uh-huh. yeah. yeah definitely that's such a cool idea i yeah, really love it. like it alhamdulillah yeah sister so um what does the naqab mean to you uh it means like it's it means a lot to me actually because it's something I've been like dreaming of for so long. And then when I like stopped wearing it the first time, like it made me feel so bad. And like, I honestly felt like a failure, you know? And, and the second time, like when I wore it, like it felt so empowering to me. Mm. And um, I felt so proud of myself. And that, and yet that fear is still there, you know, uh, that I, I might take it off someday. Like, it's not that I think of taking it off, but like, I feel like what if my circumstances change too? Like, I, what if I have to go work, look for work someday? And, and what if I couldn't find work that lets me keep my niqab on? So things like that, yeah. And the other thing, like why I love it so much is because like I get to hide my face and my whole body and like, like, I get ownership of my own body, right? Mm-hmm. In front of like uh, men, especially like men who have um, bad intentions. Like mm-hmm. you can only see what I want you to see, right? Yeah. So that's very yeah. empowering for me. And the other thing is like you are forced, like people who I interact with, like they are forced to deal with me as a person and not my face not my that's the not the color of my skin not the features of my face like you are like you don't have a choice but to deal with me you know mm. not my body so that's that i find so empowering and the other thing is uh, i know that in a lot of countries it's illegal to wear the niqab right 
and uh, well, I wouldn't say I, a lot. I think that there might be some there's a lot of like maybe um, negative um, connotations and discrimination, but I wouldn't say a lot of countries have actually banned it. Yeah, there some of countries, a lot of European countries, I think they've kind of been debating. Um, whether uh -huh. they should ban it and I think I know definitely France and Denmark they've banned it and I think uh -huh. um, in Belgium as well it's banned I think um, I yeah. think uh, recently even in Sri Lanka they banned it due to really? some bomb blast I think yeah I, oh, no, I'm not no. sure no. like two years back maybe I'm not sure okay and so like I feel very privileged that in my country we don't have to face those things like th just the occasional harassment but like that we are able to like freely wear it so i feel like it's something we should not take for granted you know alhamdulillah well, definitely it's important alhamdulillah so sister jazakallah khair for um, joining us today and having this lovely discussion um i've really enjoyed it alhamdulillah it was so great talking to you alhamdulillah Okay, sister, take care. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam.